fantastic. This is GT racing right now. He's got traction. He can't win the outside. Uh, oh, oh, he's, he's taken Anderson. Anderson's up to him. Oh, my God. These guys are going to want to make their way through the field very quickly. Oh, there we go. Oh, no. That's massive. This is it. This is over. I can't believe this. Oh, my God. God, what? Forty of the best sim races. One hundred thousand dollars on the line. Who will rise to the challenge? This is the most competitive and sought after season in iRacing World Championship history. This is where legends are made. This is the Porsche Esports Super Cup. This is the original eSport racing game. This is iRacing. Hello, welcome to SimSpeed TV for the Epiroc Sprint Series Australia. We've got a fantastic race of GT machines coming up for us here on SimSpeed TV and the iRacing Esports Network from Circuit of the Americas in Texas, USA. Tonight's broadcast is going to be brought to you by me, David Haynes, and alongside me, I'm going to have Ryan Jones. And Ryan, uh, last time I was on Sprint Series Australia, so were you. That was back at Mid-Ohio a couple rounds ago. Uh, the season's moved on a little bit. The order and the standings have changed. But I think the quality of racing we're going to see has been the, the biggest consistent thing. Yeah, the quality of racing in this series is uh, fantastic. And I was fortunate enough to be in the com box for the last round as well. I uh, somehow blew on my way into the last three rounds. And I uh, don't know how that's happened, but uh, here we are alongside you again Dave and uh, yeah no the, the series is a uh, fantastic and the best guys in Australia running around these GT machines which in themselves are fantastic pieces of machinery and it's just yeah indeed so Circuit of the Americas is going to be an interesting track for these GT machines uh, purpose built basically for Formula One it's very uh, intentionally designed to produce racing for high horsepower open wheeler cars gt machines race a little bit differently but what we do have is some long straights that are going to give us some drafting and some overtaking opportunity and of course the s's section in the first section of the lap is critical to get your line right and stay on the correct line because you understeer a little bit or if the balance of your car is bad through there you can either lose a lot of time or worse he really could this this track's great because it's got some nice flowing sections and they also got some of the 90 degree corners and hairpins as well long sweeping corners a combination of everything it's really tricky to set the car up for a track like this from experience from what i've heard <laughs> i'm not much of a setup master myself dave than about you but um you know it's one of those tracks that sort of provides a bit of action it's a bit of a polarizing track to, to a few drivers and a, as a number of people don't aren't like number one fans of the track but some it can certainly bring some great action and as we see it's why we have series like Formula One, IndyCar, they'll come here every year. 
I've heard it said, if you want to make everyone happy, open an ice cream shop. Uh, for everything else, you you uh, you might have to break a couple eggs to make an omelet. You can't design a racetrack that makes everyone happy. I think that's uh, <laughs> that's probably true. For every aspect of the track you design that might work well for one type of racing series, it might not be the best for the others. There's certainly some well-loved, well-liked circuits, but you know, as much as people, some people really like Monaco, for example, it doesn't always produce the best racing. And you know, there's no one circuit that, uh, no matter the fame or inf infamy, is uh, perfect for every type of racing that we might have here on the iRacing Esports Network and the iRacing service in general. But nonetheless, I mean, it's as uh, Kimi Raikkonen likes to say, it's the same for everyone. Everyone is racing here at Kota. So we'll have a look at the series standings. This is round four. We've had three rounds of racing and bring that one up now. And Ryan, do you have your eyes on it? Um, no, i got it now. Here we go. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Uh, so, uh, leading the championship, we've got Alexander Bird, who's won the first three races on the shot. He's in some incredible form and has looked almost unbeatable sometimes. But he's got 233 point advantage back with Zachary Hanlon there. And uh, sitting behind Zachary Hanlon, it's a pretty close battle from there, and Adam Briggs, and then Ross Rizzo, Philip Worley, Ryan Jarek, Justin Wallace, and John Peasnick are the uh, top eight drivers in this championship, and as I said, from second on back, it's a pretty close fight. Yeah, no doubt. So, Alexander Bird walking away with the championship a little bit at the moment. Can he go four from four here at Kota? There's a couple of other drivers there that need to step up their game a little bit if they're going to unsettle him. Trick Simsports with two drivers in the top 10. DPR Racing also got two drivers in the top 10 there with Adam Briggs and Philip Borley. So two juggernauts of Australian GT Racing are going to go head-to-head -head here tonight. It's going to be great to see and uh, another interesting factor in this race. I've just taken a little keys at the uh, track temp for Dave. 17 degrees track temp. That is absolutely freezing. Yeah, it's... Uh, race session set for sunrise so very cold track temperatures right there that's going to mean a lot of grip for certain types of cars that might mean that they're quite twitchy we have a, several different manufacturers of gte machines that are eligible for the sprint series australia the most popular of which seems to be the bmw m8 gte it's a pretty well rounded front engine rear wheel drive turbocharged v8 in that but there's uh, some other options that are out there and they include Ford GT, which has been a very famous, well-known GTE machine with some Le Mans victories to its name as well. And then, of course, there's the Ferrari 488 GTE and the Porsche 911 RSR with its beautiful exhaust. And that's one that can, uh, for some tracks, really come into its own element looking after the tyres or uh, through some of the higher speed corners. We'll see which one comes out on top here, but certainly Alexander Bird and Trick Sim Sports, they fancy that BMW and it's worked out for them so far. Yeah, the BMWs look brilliant for those guys and sometimes it can be down to just driver preference as well and some, as we know, cars don't all handle the same and some people may prefer the particular handling characteristics of a BMW compared to the Ferrari and that that just be the deciding factor. And a lot of the times we mentioned tire wear and, and that sort of thing, that is mostly driver input as well. You can't make the car do everything for you. These drivers still got to put the work in and get those tyres uh, to make their way to the end of the race and uh, get that car around the track as fast as they can. Indeed, the one lap uh, performance means a little bit more here in Sprint Series Australia than it does in the Companion Series of the Oceanic Endurance Championship where we were just at Spa this weekend. There, things like fuel consumption, tyre management, all matter a lot more they do here in Sprint Series Australia, where you need to race your way to the front and stay there. Looking at Alexander Bird right now, Trick Sim Sports, and points leader. And I think after winning the first three rounds, there's there's a real weight of expectation there for Alex Bird. We'll see if that uh, sort of powers them or makes them crack under the pressure. But nice points lead. At this stage in the championship, just finishing on the podium, finishing in the top five for the remainder of the season might even be enough. There's a couple of names you've seen that are high in the standings that haven't necessarily uh, 
been the fastest driver, they've just consistently finished. Yeah, exactly. The the guy I mentioned pre-broadcast was Justin Wallace from, from Race and Oz. And, uh, I was talking to him just the other day that, you know, he's not run particularly well in terms of his finishing position, but what he's done is he's finished in a top half of the field, finished mid-back, and he's got to the finish line in every single race. And as a result, he finds himself seventh in the championship, just 40 points off, off Ross Rizzo in fourth. So consistency is all you need in, in motor racing sometimes and finish the end finish the race and uh, you could find yourself pretty high up yeah indeed 400 points for the win but then it, it doesn't trail off that quickly there's plenty of points still on offer you know uh, down below the top 10 is it uh, points down to 20th place or, or something like that i believe definitely uh showing up every round getting in the points every round and just finishing there come season's end, or even in this case, by sort of mid-season, you can be standing very, very nicely in those standings. Yeah, every point matters. We've seen championships in the real world and in our racing alike decided by just mere single points, even. And uh, that's why we love motor racing. Anything can happen. Anything most likely will happen. And as a result, we see fantastic racing and fantastic climaxes to championships that uh, live long in the memory. Indeed, our warm-up just finishing now, and uh, then it's time for the cars to form up on the grid, and it'll be time to go racing momentarily. Drivers just taking a couple minutes to adjust to the circumstances, adjust to the traffic, and, and the, the weather, the track conditions, and then it's about to be time to go racing. Because at a low oh, a global company, we still have family values. This is what inspires me. And Epiroc Australia is looking for passionate people to be part of our global team and to make a real difference for our customers. If you're ready to start a new journey, visit us at epiroc.com.au. Epiroc, proud sponsors of the Sprint Series Australia. Now it's time to look at our starting grid for Epiroc Sprint Series Australia, round four from Circuit of the Americas. And on pole position for Trick Sim Sports is Anthony Winkleman. And alongside him, John Peasnick, JPR Racing. This is a battle we've seen before in this series and we will no doubt see again today. Row behind that, Rhys Gasol and Louise Polo Gallon, then Philip Worley and Alexander Bird, your points leader, starting from sixth on the grid. And then row four is rounded out by Sam Sutton and Ethan Warren. Running out the top 10, gonna to be Ryan Jerick and Trent Thomas. And it's Cody Bircher, Michael Healy from uh... Trick Sim Sports, Cameron Dan, Zachary Hamlin, 13th and 40th. Hamlin second in points. Going to need to finish a lot higher than there to close the gap to Alexander Bird. Ross Rizzo, Dominic Ferrara surrounding out the top 16 there, number 8. 17th place, Darren Lobb. 18th, Daniel Misdale. 19th, Jimmy Ball. 20th, Scott Zalowski. 21st is Joshua Bird and Mitch McLeod starting out a 22nd place. And then Bo Albert, pretty deep in the field alongside Mia Ott. Two names. We might have expected to have been a little bit quicker in qualifying. Let's see if they can race up through the field. 25th going to be Benjamin Johnson, then Justin Wallace, a consistent finisher back there in 26. Thomas Hins, Reese Keane, 27th and 28th, uh, sharing row 15 with David Mulhall, Simon Mazomo, Richard Hunter, and Brett Canante. Well, the rest will be flicking by on your screen, but we're getting ready to start racing. The field now formed up behind that Porsche safety car. Just a couple more corners to go and then it will be the control of Anthony Winkleman to get them racing here at Circuit of the Americas. Porsche car peels in to the pit lane. The field two by two, ready for the start of round four. Sprint Series Australia and very, very early jump from Anthony Winkleman. He is racing, trying to get a big jump. And that means it's the teammates of Pisnik and Gasol side by side, battling over second place. Tough breaking zone uphill here into turn one at Kota. A little bit blind, lots of apexes. Hopefully everyone can keep it clean. You see we've got a bumper field 
very many cars and already a couple coming together doesn't look like too many dramas just a couple of uh, nose to tail fender benders so Winkleman, Peasnik, Gasol, Gowan your top four no change for them through the start of the lap nice clean start for the leaders of the race there keeping those cars clean is a event is a good start to your race we're going to see those guys go side by side there deep in the pack still jostling the position to the way down the order that's Trent Thomas going backwards there losing two spots in this couple of corners getting edged out and almost losing control the car gets quite a bit sideways up and over the crest he's going to hold on to it but now he's going to be under pressure as they go three wide at sea almost behind them that's Ethan Warren right down on the inside making contact with the Trek Sim Sport car and uh, it's all hands on deck down here in the mid pack these guys are going to make some early progress couple of the corners here at Circuit of the Americas really open up towards the apex, really encourages you to have a dive from some distance back on the brakes, but it's not always particularly well advised to do so. So your top six have not switched order from the start, but there are battles deeper in the field. We saw Ethan Warren, big dive on Sam Sutton. He grabbed a position there. We saw Bircher and Hanlon making some moves. And we look here, Trent Thomas, Ross Rizzo. This is just outside of the top ten. And... Uh, top, uh, Trent Thomas back there riding on board now so couple of positions switching inside the top 10 of course that's going to happen with as many cars as that we have got here for our 45 minute race Alexander Anthony Winkleman going to come around the final corner and lead at lap one from pole position he'll be happy with that start he's got about second advantage there back to John Fiesnick and then it's bumper to bumper down the pack as we see Dominic Ferraris coming into the pit stop so very early on maybe a bit of damage to that car or is opting for a super early pit stop and trying to get out of some of that carnage in the mid pack and see some guys trying to show the nose there that's Thomas Hintz, Benjamin Johnson, Johnson 25th there up in behind the racing Oz car that is Justin Wallace but at the moment no moves being made as far as we can see they're all starting to settle out, settle themselves out now and settle in for this 45 minute race. Altus Esports with the two big movers on the first lap. Zach Hanlon up three spots, Bo Albert up three spots. So both of those Altus guys making some moves early and also we saw Ethan Warren grab a spot as well. So lightning starts for Altus. Maybe their qualifying wasn't so great, but here in the race they're trying to make an impression and they're trying to do it quick. Riding on board Ryan Jarek, he's looking at Sam Sutton right in front. This is the longest straight on the circuit. Fully in sixth gear here. Slipstream, this is where you're going to look at it. Big braking move is down here. And again, you see there the track opens up a little bit on before the apex of that corner. Makes it very easy to throw your car up the inside. Michael Healy does it on Zach Hanlon. Takes one spot away from him. Hanlon only up two spots now. So this battle between Altus and three trick cars. Healy is uh, mugging Hanlon. Thomas and Rizzo right behind going to try and grab a spot as well. Three trick cars, one Altus car, and out of position and now dropping after his great start is Zach Hanlon. Fantastic battle side by side through this corner of about three or four apexes. Yeah, Thomas tries to go longer there. Wasn't going to work, but now he's going to get the cut back there on the penultimate corner, get back to the inside of Zachary Hanlon, doesn't quite have the nose up, fine off to make a move, but he's going to force him into a mistake, and a slide from Hanlon sees him, lose the spot to Trent Thomas, and look at the run that Ross Rizzo's got, looks like Thomas has got a slowdown, and in behind the ball, making a three wide, is going to be Cameron Dance to the inside, he's going to get two, maybe three for one here, backs out of it, and Zachary Hanlon's going to lose the spot still, going through was Ross Rizzo, and now Darren Lobb's going to find his way by Hanlon as well, around the outer side at turn number two, should get this move completed for the S's and Will, and that was a disastrous final second for Zachary Hanlon. And Trent Thomas too, he must have had a big old course cut through the penultimate corner, because he then had to serve it on the start-finish line. He's lost a bunch of positions out of that, so is Zachary Hanlon going back four spots on this lap. Bit of damage to that Ferrari that we're looking at here, right in front of Zach Hanlon of Darren Lobb. So all going off in the mid-pack here, a lot of it triggered by the trick cars trying to get through on Zach Hanlon. And then a bit of a course cut, a bit of a slowdown. Hanlon's going to try and grab one spot back and then uh, looking for a two-for-one deal here is Darren Misdale who's also going to try and get through. Real battles here, 12th on back. Down the back stretch they go. This is where the highest speeds are, where the slipstream is the most powerful. 
might see Rizzo try to make a move on Dance. We know the Porsches in sixth gear aren't quite as strong as they are through some of the more technical sections or they are looking after their tyres. So down the straights is where Cameron Dance is going to be most vulnerable. But then it comes into this technical slow section here. Then with some faster corners, that's where the Porsche might be stronger. Oh, Couple strong cars back around. Back. Who's that? That was Brent Canazzi for a bit of sim small. It's just looped it there, coming out of the uh, hairpin quarter. We've got a motor simulation replay up on screen. You see what's unfolding for Canazzi here. In the draft of the Ford GT up there in front of him. That big snaking train of cars making their way down into the corner. We see a move up in front as Canazzi has lost it by himself. Oh, okay. Yeah, Canazzi checked up a little bit, it looks like to avoid the spinning car of Justin Wallace up there in front of him. You see Wallace move back to 30th place, so he's trying to make some spots back up. Just overdid it, locked the rears, Gnanzi dropped the check up, got a whack from behind, and just a bit of wrong place, wrong time for Gnanzi. Yeah, indeed, a couple of nasty curbs around here, not least of them are through the S's here. Wallace might have just caught a tiny bit of one of those nasty little sausage curbs, and that will definitely upset a uh, low-slung GT car. Oh, might just send it around if you're not careful. So Cam Dance has launched it off one of the curbs through the S's and losing a bunch of spots now. Hanlon, oh and there's trouble and around goes Minsdale right on the racing line. He's facing backwards, that's a precarious one if ever I see one. Someone else has spun around a couple of corner up ahead of him as well. That's Darren Lobb and that's a big shake up in that mid-pack battle. We'll get another replay up on screen for you. So all going off through the S's once again. Someone that looks like Dance has shortcut it. Lobb might have had to serve a slowdown. At least he's going side by side. Nearly three wide there as they try to go past Dance serving a slowdown. Lobb gets into someone else and gets helped around once again. Oh, Ms. Dance someone's on the roof. The wrong way. Sorry, someone's on the roof. That's Mulhall. Right there on the uh, first corner heading into the back straightaway. And I dare say, may see a safe scar for that one. They were four wide coming into the corner, and again Wallace finds himself in an instant. Mulhall, another car, wrong place, wrong time, just gets looped onto his roof, and sorry to cut you off there, but car on his roof is a, not an everyday occurrence. No, exactly. So that's what I talked about. Another one of those corners where it sort of opens up before the apex really invites you to dive it down inside. They go four wide, and that's really not going to work through the apex. Safety car has been called for that car on its roof. This will absolutely shake up the order. This will uh, annul the lead that Anthony Wilkerman had been building up. John Peasley, Reese Gasol, Alex Bird behind, all going to close back up. And there's the safety car. They might have to check up slow down and let it back through another motor simulation replay a lot went on on that lap ryan and this is another look at it i mean four wide how often is that going to work out it's a separate incident we're watching here what happens let's see that uh, oh we can't quite find the incident for you there getting word there were four cars that have managed to go around somewhere on track we find it we'll bring it up for you yeah, not too long, but yeah, as you mentioned, that was a crazy lap, many instances up and down the pack, and going to shake this field up quite a bit, and there's been some big movements in this race, as you mentioned earlier, Bo Albert, he's up in the 14th place now from 23rd, and a little bit further back, 34th, where was it, just right, 34th, 25th, Adam Briggs, his crash is helping a lot of people to move up through the order. Yeah, wow, well, what a, a very hectic first 10 minutes of this race. It was all going on, and it was always going to happen with a strong grid of uh, more than 40 cars that took the race start. There was always going to be some argy-bargy somewhere through the pack. This gives us a second to catch our breath. As you rightly point out, a couple of people have profited from the carnage, as it were. Oh, well, Albert, up nine spots from where he started. Adam Briggs started from near the back of the field. He's also gained nine spots into 25th. So, uh, the unfortunate uh, accidents for some, the misfortune of some has allowed some others to profit. Up the front, it's been pretty easy for Winkleman, Peasnik, and Gasol, but it's further back in the pack that the order has well and truly shaken up. One of the biggest losers is Luis Polo Gallon and Trent Thomas, who've both lost seven and eight spots, respectively. So, not easy starts for them. What this does is bunch all the field back up, and they might have another opportunity. 
someone that started to make their way forward a little bit up the front. Two spots gained Alexander Bird. We saw him start from sixth place in this race, a little bit further back than we would expect the three-time defending race winner in this series. He's made early progress up into fourth place, and he might fancy his chances now. Only got three cars to pass Kurt's lead in this race. But as we've seen, Anthony Monkman was unchallenged by PC and So it'd be interesting to see if these guys are a little bit more aggressive off this restart now. There are only about 30 minutes left in this race. It will take a couple minutes when we go racing once again. Going to be an interesting one for sure. Yeah, as we said, this facility nearly purpose-built for Formula 1 and Grand Prix racing. What that means is it's quite a long lap here, especially compared to some other circuits. 5.5 kilometers, nearly three and a half miles. So each lap that we do behind this safety car eats up a lot of time from the race. Safety car speed is about 40 to 45 percent of full race pace. So if we do two laps or three laps behind the safety car, that can take quite a lot of time out of the race just because this is a formula one venue it's quite a long lap yeah pretty big circuit circle of the americas it is 5.5 kilometers in length which is substantially bigger than quite a lot of tracks that we see on the ssa calendar but as you mentioned at safe scar going real slow it's incredibly frustrating as a driver and that's why that anecdote, safety cars bring safety cars, always comes into play because these drivers have just had a 10 minute burst of, of hard racing, door to door action, going flat out around the track, and they're all cooped up behind the safety car, unable to go anywhere. And it just makes you get a bit antsy and you, and you start to get a bit itchy to go racing again. And once you do, it all just goes a bit red mist for these drivers, and uh, we can often see some absolute carnage. Yeah, the only thing that's uh, going to help us is that the restart will be single file, unlike the race start, which was uh, two by two. A couple of cars diving into the pit lane at this point. I see an Altus car, I see a trick car. It's Ross Rizzo. Missed quite who was following him, but Bo Albert was in that area. That looks like Zach Hanlon with the Maybelline purple accents to the BMW, and they are not alone in jumping into the pit lane. Quite a few takers. Ross Rizzo, the highest in the field, but Zach Hanlon followed him in. Scott Soloski in as well. Jimmy Ball, Trent Thomas, Mia Ott, Reese Keane, Adam Briggs, just about everyone from behind there jumping into the pits. It's really our top 15 or top 10 or so that have stayed out. Everyone else uh, jumping into the lane. The first out is going to be Ross Rizzo, followed by Zach Hanlon, each of them with about six seconds of fuel, so a little splashed. But with the time we've had behind the safety car, that's probably enough to get home from here, you would think, considering we're still going to have at least one more lap behind the safety car, where there'll be one saving fuel, and two, it'll just eat some of the remaining time of the race. Yeah, you certainly think they're going to get home from here to 30 minutes to go. In theory, it's a good strategy. They should be able to uh, make their way home under green flag conditions, like putting again all those guys in front of them, going to have to dive into the pit lane. However, the thing you do is you pick you beat yourself back in the pack behind quite a few more cars and not only do you beat yourself at risk of being involved in a crash and potentially another caution but it also means a bit of the accordion effect comes into play where at the back of the pack before you know it just suddenly ends up 30 plus seconds behind the leader and the leader can make that pit stop and you're still behind them so yeah, that's exactly like as well we've got 20 cars that have not pitted ross rizzo was uh, running pretty well he's now 21st with 19 cars between him and his teammate who's leading the race i mean how quickly can he clear uh, some of those cars that would have been well and truly behind him had he not taken that pit stop it's all about that trade-off between time in the pit lane and uh, time in traffic and track position uh, we spoke uh, almost till we were blue in the face during OEC about how long the Spa Endurance pit lane is. One minute from entry to exit, uh, not including your stationary time. Here at Circuit of the Americas, a much more manageable 25 seconds. So realistically, uh, you, some of your leaders, your top five cars that stayed out, are either hoping they can fuel save like hell and make it to the end, I don't see that being quite likely or they're hoping in two three four five laps they can build out a 25 second gap pit 
and then be able to go full tilt, no conservation, till the end. So basically, 40 cars in the field, 20 taking the pits under the safety car, 20 staying out. We've split the strategy in the field in half, and it's going to give us a very exciting last 28, 29 minutes or so. I did see the lights were off on the safety car, hopefully going racing this time, Ryan. It's going to be very interesting to see how this one plays out. Those guys like Rizzo and Hanlon further back, how quickly can they make their way forward? It's going to be tough. It's not the easiest place to overtake. It's not the hardest, though. It's not impossible. You can definitely get it done. But we've seen already today, it can go wrong so, so quickly. This is going to be absolutely fantastic. Winkleman, Pizen, the still Bird, are they going to make it a move to the lead of the race? Or are they going to try and just power away from those guys behind and build up themselves up a gap and play the relatively long game it's only 28 minutes of course left on the clock though yeah indeed that it's a sprint series and then we have a safety car that eats up 10 or so minutes and what was already going to be a pretty quick race now well we've lost about a third of it already 28 minutes to go Winkleman from Peasnik from Gasol third in fourth and Philip Worley in fifth it's going to be very, very exciting when we go racing once again shortly. That safety car peels away into the pit entry. Winkleman controls the field again, and he jumped very early on the restart. Will he do the same this time? Not quite. He waits and then puts the power down. Peasnik nearly gets rear-ended by his teammate Gasol, but we are racing once again. And behind that, Gasol lost a bit of time, has to defend from Bird. Bird trying to go up another spot. They're almost going to be three wide there. They're two wide with Ethan Warren and Sam Sutton in the background. Single file start will hope will be a little bit cleaner off this restart, but it's a great opportunity to overtake into turn one, and some of these drivers know it. A bit of contact made between Gasol and Bird there. Gasol did not want Bird to get back by him. He's going to be back up into third place, and Bird's going to have to wait a couple more corners. He's back in the pack. There's been another incident. This is Benjamin Johnson facing backwards, and we will probably get a replay soon of what's unfolding for him as he gets his car pointed back the right way. This is Ryan Jerk there, back in ninth place on the camera dance. Six in sports, back in 15th. And uh, most of these guys have managed to keep it clean. Zachary Hanlon is back there at 20th place and Johnson stopped on the circuit and we're gonna replay now hopefully this will bring out another caution we'll see what's unfolded I'm gonna hazard a guess before we see it that he was rotated in during turn number one he's come in there relatively by himself and he has just taken a little whack from that uh, Ferrari or Ford back in behind him and that was Thomas Hins a bit sloppy that one to be honest with here and Johnson not too happy about that we'll get the onboard with Thomas Hins for Ferrari racing and see what it looks from his perspective and uh, just just carried a bit more speed to the corner than Johnson maybe didn't expect him to check up as much as he did and unfortunately round goes Johnson yeah not particularly malicious but just a little bit clumsy between both just uh, didn't quite read what the apex speed of the car in front is going to be and helped them around and I think Ross Rizzo was just behind that and had to take some evasive action because he was the first of the drivers that jumped into the pits he's grabbed two spots off the restart but he's not moving up through the field quite as quickly as he might otherwise like. Up the front here though, the racing continues. Winkleman does not have as much of a lead as he got off the initial race start. Pieznik and Gasol, the teammates behind, definitely have a lot more slipstream off him than they had last time. Alex Bird moved up into fourth position. He's going to pressure the two of them. He got very close on the brakes on, into turn one as well. So a little bit of a sandwich there. Two JPR racing cars between two trick cars up the head of the field. We thought that's how it might end up being. That's what it's like out the front. These guys might still need to make a pit stop to be able to get to the end though. They can't fight each other too hard or they'll get swallowed up by those drivers who may have made a strategy masterstroke by pitting underneath that safety car. Yeah, exactly. They've got to play it smart here and not hold themselves up too much. We're looking at Sam Sutton coming under pressure from Ethan Warren for sixth place. Let's see if Warren can make a move down here into this corner. Not going to be close enough. Going to get very close to this back end, though. But he's going to get a good slipstream. If he gets a good exit down this back straight, it looks like Sutton had a pretty good exit. Warren's just about there. We'll have a look. We'll stay on board, I think, if we get down to the other straight and see whether he's going to be close enough. We... I think he's going to be a bit too far back, don't you think, David? And uh, it doesn't look like anyone's really close enough in this train to make a move. 
and Sam Sutton also had the slipstream off the car in front of Philip Worley. But here's another battle. Fusion Sim Racing car goes down to the inside. No contact made. One of the... Uh, it's Luis Polo Gallon, one of the few drivers taking the Ford. He was around there in turn 12. And it uh, doesn't look like a whole heap of damage on the car, but we've seen people just clip a bit too much of the inside kerb, rotate it around. Track can be a bit slippery there in the kerbs, and also the AstroTurf on the exit uh, do not have as much grip. The beer on just rotated it. One of the Apex gets it coming back the right way. Good recovery there, but that's not going to be fantastic for them. Is now, oh, they're stuck three wide. Oh. No, we're watching little pieces and now we're going back with these guys and they're all still making contact, they're still three wide. I don't know how they've made it through there, they were three wide all the way through that long, as you described it earlier, three or four apex corner, using all the track out there on the exit of the penultimate corner and that was very messy and uh, very lucky not to have a crash there. That's uh, Justin Moore spinning the move on for 27th place and this is Cameron Dance up ahead of them at turn one, putting a move on Joshua Verdon and making it sick. Dance now back into the position he qualified after losing a couple of spots, picking up a slowdown through the S's earlier on. And that Porsche, he just needs to settle down a little bit, get it underneath him. Through the S's here is one of the spots that the Ford and the Porsche should be a little bit quicker than things like the BMW. Doesn't necessarily always work out that way. Here, Zach Hanlon right behind Ross Rizzo, 18th and 19th. But these are the leading cars that have taken their pit service already and may find themselves much higher up the order when cars in front pit. Give you an idea, right now, Ross Rizzo is already 12 seconds behind leader Anthony Winkleman. That's only half of the gap that we're estimating Winkleman might need to be able to pit and still come out ahead of his teammate Rizzo. Hanlon going to be under pressure, though, from Scott Soloski. Trick cars everywhere. Yep, there's one right down to the inside of Zachary Hanlon now for 19th place. Hanlon's going to run it really deep. Might get around the outside of that car in front of him. That's Ross Rizzo. Won't do it. Now he's going to be on the inside. He's going to have the favourite line for the next corner. But uh, if he can stay there, South is now the inside of the double apex coming up. And he will just about stay there. Hanlon leaves him the room. Back up the inside. South, great side-by-side -side racing for these guys. They're still side-by-side. -side. It's a fantastic show that these two are putting on. It looks like Sazaski may have lifted off, he's still got his nose there, but you just can't quite hold it around the outside of that corner. That's what that section of track was designed for, the switchbacks being able to hold it around the outside potentially, and that becomes the inside for the next corner. And Hanlon's just gone and demonstrated how you can defend through that section, and luckily Hanlon has not lost too much time to the cars in front. They've got their own little battle at the head of the field though. Sam Sutton is starting to hold up. Ethan Warren just sorry Philip Worley holding up Sam Sutton holding up Ethan Warren just a little bit through here as well we think the Porsche might be a little bit quicker than the BMW a lot of it will come down to downforce levels driver preference and setup though now, monstering over all of the curbs is the BMW trying somehow to set up a run to make an attack here comes the modem simulation replay this is a trick sim sport car, this is Scott Sazowski. This that was a little bit of contact that Rizzo made. Oh, that was up at turn one, Rizzo, a little bit of contact with Zachary Hanlon, who was on his outside, Sazowski will get that spot off Hanlon. And uh, Hanlon will be a bit disappointed with that one for sure. Yeah, Rizzo has checked him up just a little bit, and to the benefit of his trick sim sports teammate, he is up the head of the field, your points leader, riding on board with Alexander Bird, who's already picked up two spots this race. Now he's trying to get himself into a podium position, looking at the back of Reese Gasol. He's riding along behind his teammate, John Piesnick. Winkleman now 1.8 seconds clear of Piesnick. So Winkleman continuing to try and break away at the front. Not necessarily easy with the slipstream around here. Luis Paulo Gallon, we saw him go for a bit of a spin earlier in this section of track. He's going to try and get around the outside of Cameron Dance. Dance leaves him plenty of room. And we'll see, does Gallon get through this time side by side through the long right hander? Ooh. Some more trouble there at the end of the long straightaway. This is Darren Lobb. He might have got a piece of that. Luke Page definitely got a piece of that one. He was facing the wrong way at the exit of the corner. We'll go back to the front though. This is Sam Sutton, Philip Wally for 6th place, any moves can be made up here at turn 1, maybe we'll see one from, from Sam Sutton, He's trying to get up the inside of Wally, can't quite get the nose up there far enough, and Wally just dust enough to hold him off, 
but still something being held up. As back in the pack, we see a move from Louise Paula Gallant and Cameron Dance again. Going to get that spot away from him for 13th place. Yeah, no doubt. Great battle in here. But what some of this is doing is it's checking up the guys behind who have pitted. So uh, Rizzo, Soloski and Hamlin are in this train as well. Not able to get through yet. And every lap losing a couple of seconds to the head of the train who might still need to pit strategy game playing out a little bit more than we normally expect in Sprint Series Australia, but I think I'm loving it personally. Yes, could see some strategy coming into a 45 minute race, you don't often see it. Good to see it today, we're on board with Ethan Warren, Altus Esports. Still in behind this battle in front of him, Samsung and Philip Wally. Not going to be close enough to remove, they will close up on their brakes, you'll get really close to the back of Samsung. Just letting him know he's there, and big pressure for Philip Wally at the moment, leading this pack. There's a, this is a big battle for 30th place, about 7 or 8 cars, all bumper to bumper. Nothing really unable to make any moves stick, as we are, are going to see a move though. This is a Joshua, Bernard Martin, so lastly, Thomas Hibbs. They have an exchange of positions there, as they make their way through the back part of the circuit. Yep, Hins in the Ford uh, loses out a spot to Silvassi in the Trick BMW who gets through, and Ross Rizzo wants a piece of that as well. So the Sim Racing Channel Ford there for Thomas Hins loses out one spot, runs a little bit wide through the penultimate corner. A couple of cars now from the front train jumping into the pit lane. Silvassi, the first person to blink under green flag conditions here, and uh, he'll lose ton of spots as will Thomas Hins who's come in with him and this releases some of those cars that are running with the pit stops Ross Rizzo, Zachary Hamlin, Zlowski will all move forwards and they're about 16 seconds off the lead of the race so theory is that they could jump themselves up into the lead if everyone else makes a pit stop. Yeah not the worst uh, move though from the likes of Silvassi and Thomas because they were being held up a little bit in this train it'll give them a bit of clear air It'll take him out of contention of a, of a win. Certainly, I don't think the strategy and where they were is going to play for them like that. But uh, if they were being held up in this train, it definitely gives them an opportunity to jump the likes of Polo Gallon, Cameron Dance, Josh Bird, and even Mitchell McLeod and Michael Healy. So it could work out for them ducking in a little bit early. But here's a battle inside your top five for that last spot in your top five. Sam Sutton finally going to try and get past Philip Wally. Just as I mentioned, Mitchell McLeod, he doesn't like us talking about him, and I think it's for this reason. He's just looped it. Sam Sutton's managed to get by and Philip Wally. Now Hamlin, oh sorry, Warren's trying to have a go at Wally as well. He might be able to lunge up the inside, but Wally's going to shut that door firmly shut in his face. And Cody Birch is now getting a bit of the action. We'll get a motor simulation replay. This will be of the Mitchell McLeod incident. He's all by himself through turn one, and it's a tricky corner. And uh, Mitchell McLeod shows us why. He just loses three rounds and goes around. Indeed, so 16 minutes remaining, couple cars, your entire top 14 cars still need to pit. Ross Rizzo now up into 15th with Scott Soloski 16th and Zach Hamlin in 17th who have pitted with enough fuel to get to the end. They are now though 17 seconds adrift of the lead. Winkleman needs to put in qualifying laps if he's going to win this race, otherwise it's Rizzo with the strategy masterstroke for Trick underneath the safety car. You can see the gap that Winkleman has built out for the lead though. Pieznik almost two seconds behind and, and he was right there off the safety car restart. And Gasol's now dropped back from his teammate Pieznik and he's the cork in the bottle for the rest of the top three. Bird, Sutton, Wally, Warren and Cody Birch are all in this train here for the top three. And we've mentioned it, they need to be moving quickly because a pit stop is still in their future. And if they lose time now, and when they feed out of that pit stop, it'll be much deeper down the order than if they work together, at least for the moment. Exactly, but at the moment, if they do make this stop, they're going to come out behind Hamlin, Sazowski, and Rizzo. And uh, we could see a dash to the finish between those guys racing for the win. Uh, the guy that's been a bit far down the order at the moment is... Oh, no! That's a big crash! 
to Sam Sutton. He's looped to Alexander Bird's involved in that as well. Bo Albert Gasol in there as well. That had to have been some sort of failure for Sam Sutton on the uh, technical side, or a huge lockup. We'll get a replay here. Sam Sutton making his way down the back straight away. He's unchallenged and uh, jumps on the brakes, and it just does not stop at all. Locks it up straight into the side of Gasol and Bird, and that's just really unfortunate for those two. Nothing they could do about that. They wouldn't have even seen that one coming. One more angle of it, because that is a huge, huge problem there in our top uh, couple of spots there. It was inside our top ten, and now a lot of them moving down. Bird jumps into the pit lane. Sam Sutton does now as well. These guys it's really, really compromised their race when they needed to be building out a gap to cars that had pitted behind, and suddenly they've lost it there. And that's a, a, I think, an uncommon mistake from Sam Sutton there. I, I don't, I don't think of him as someone uh, making mistakes like that often. It was a, if it was an overtaking maneuver, it was very, very, very ambitious. I think he's just uh, become unsighted or distracted from his braking marker, missed it, and then at the point he realised he was uh, way overshot. Uh, he tried to turn to the left to the inside to miss the cars in front. Maybe should have turned to the right. While that's going on, Wally is coming under pressure. Still from Warren. Going to angle that car out wide, try to get the run, but he's not going to get it. Warren's going to go through, and now Cody Bircher will start right on behind Wally. I was just going to mention the guy that was a bit further down than he's been the last couple of races, Alexander Bird. Not looking like he's going to win this race. Uh, definitely doesn't look that way now. And uh, looks like we're going to have a new winner for the first time in SSA as Wally tries to edge Bircher over the, to the left hand side of the track. Does it successfully, but Bircher can just tip that nose underneath and can't quite get it done. Wally just looked to have the pace of those guys he's battling. He's doing a pretty decent job of holding them up pretty well and uh, defending as back in the pack, Ross Rizzo and Joshua Burden exchange positions with relative ease there. No paint being swapped as Hanlon and Sozlowski. Oh, they make contacts, and no, Hanlon's gone around, and that's disastrous for the driver that needed to put in a perfect race to close the gap to Alexander Burden when his championship rival has involved in a crash. Hanlon's not going to capitalise in the way he should. Trying to make the move here on Sislowski, just locked the brake, pinched it, and just got into his left side door, and it's just rotated that car around. And just an unfortunate incident for Hanlon there, and he'll drop a couple of spots back down the order. And for all the runoff we've got here, paved and all sorts at Circuit of the Americas, we've seen plenty of cars come together, plenty of cars go for a spin. Uh, it's not been easy, not been easy for these drivers for sure. The battling has been uh, intense, we've seen three wide and more. Plenty of cars coming to grief, coming together. Big hop over the curb there for Bo Albert. The BMW eats it up though and carries on. It's starting to see this field really start to shake up now. Ross Rizzo's up into 11th place after making that pit stop under the yellow flag condition. Just trying Sam to find some Sutton Zaskis. has been yeah. penalised for that uh, collision that, is, that uh, injured Alexander Bird and uh, the others there. Um, I think uh, Zach Hanlon was in that one as well. Mia Ott, meanwhile, is around. Lots going on. That's what happens with a big grid in a sprint race, is that you don't quite know where to look some of the times. Here's we're looking at what's happened to Mia Ott. This is on approach towards the S's for the Sim Racing Channel Ferrari. Is it a case of eating too much of the curb? Oh, yep. Getting some airtime through those curbs. Unsettles them for the next one, and around they go. Save though, not to put it back onto the racing line. I'll go on their way. And Sam Sun, unfortunate, to not unfortunate, but unfortunately goes from bad to worse for him as Justin Wallace just tries to make his way into the top 20. He's still in 20th place, trying to put him over Darren Huxon, won't quite do it. And uh, Mr. Consistency so looking like he's going to get another top half of the field himself today if he keeps on his way. Wallace has pitted, Briggs right behind has pitted, Darren Huxham hasn't yet and that's why they're so eager to get through is they're being held up and the cars that are even further in front that have already pitted are getting further away and those are the cars that Wallace is really battling, it's losing a little bit of time. Cody Bircher, one of the first cars from your top five to blink into that pit lane. And most of the other top ten stay out. 
Winkleman, Peasnik, Warren, that like still out there. So is Bo Albert and Ryan Jericho, which is one of the battles we were watching. And here, Burden and Soloski. Burden hasn't pitted, Soloski has. In the hopes of a top five potentially for Scott Soloski, uh, or even a podium, rests on not being held up too long behind Joshua Burden. Uh, Ross Rizzo, the highest positioned car that has pitted, Soloski, second highest that has pitted, and they'd definitely be hoping for converting that into a win and second place, or at least spots on the podium. Yes, yeah, certainly. I think we'll see most of these guys stay out as long as they can. If, certainly if Winkland, if he feels he's got the pace to open up a, a gap big enough to make a pit stop and come out ahead of Ross Rizzo, he'll want to do it. He won't want to come out behind him and then use his pace to try and pass him because as you see, you can go wrong very easily, and uh, it's not guaranteed that uh, Jarek, oh, Albert is taking a look at move. Albert. Yeah, Jarek to the inside, into that turn 12 breaking zone where we've seen some moves made, and we've seen it go wrong before, but I think that was pretty well done by Jarek. Gets it done, gets the overlap completed, and Albert, I think, didn't fight that too hard. We've got a near uh, <laughs> mirror move happening behind. Soloski can't get past Burden this time, and again, Burden yet to pit will have to at some point but until then it's harming Soloski's run at the podium he certainly is and he's a 20 long seconds off leader the race back in the pack almost touching doors uh Mia Rott and Darren Love Love on the inside there they're going to exchange a bit of paint almost on exit going to the outside of the track and uh, they look for the switch back not quite going to hurt these guys are racing really close together at the moment not making any contact though, which is good, and uh, to what Ott's been in the course today, Collinson's already, and uh, Michael Healy now blinks and dives down into pit lane. Yeah, eight minutes to go means it's a tiny little splash to get to the end from here. I have to keep an eye on how much fuel some of these drivers think they're going to need to get to the end, because the drivers who pitted under the safety car, they didn't know as much then when they pitted as the drivers do now about uh, the consumption, about was it going to stay green to the end, how many more laps under safety car was there. The drivers who pitted under safety car had to be a bit more cautious, a bit more conservative, take on a bit more fuel. It's the drivers pitting now with just two or so laps to go who can really knife edge uh, how much fuel they want to take. Bird, Mizomo side by side in the end, it's Bird to the inside at the entrance of the S. A lot of smoke, Whoa. someone uh, around there surely, as you can someone is off and it's uh, one of the trick cars who's had a bit of an incident. Michael Healy, what happened there through the S's? I saw a lot of smoke. A bit of modem simulation replay up on screen. And uh, this is Richard Hunter from DPI Racing in behind Justin Wallace side by side with uh, Michael Healy. And oh, Healy just jumps the curb. Wallace just misses him and Healy just misses the wall as well. And that was that could have been a much bigger crash for both those drivers and Healy's probably lucky with that one not to have more damage. Certainly here we go, just maybe feels a bit squeezed down to the inside, launches it into the air on those curves as we've seen a couple of drivers do. And in the end, big sideways moment laid down all that smoke that we saw, but he managed to gather it up without going fully sideways. Anthony Winkham and John Peasnick to top two into the lane. Warren follows them as well. Philip Wally follows that. There's just two laps to go, but these guys do not have enough fuel to get to the end. I don't think anyone can save to get to the end if the likes of Winkleman, uh, Peasnick, or Ross Rizzo don't think they can. But Rizzo, he, he's going to come through, and I think from... Uh, where did he start? 15th on the grid or so. He's going to jump his teammate Anthony Winkleman. Rizzo through into the lead of the race. Winkleman is going to come out. Where is he going to feed out? Scott Soloski. I think it's going to be in third. Blinding strategy call here from some of the trip cars to pit under the safety car. Winkleman doing a great job to build up enough of a gap that pitting under green means that he's going to stay in the podium positions and now it's Rizzo, Soloski, Winkleman and Trent Thomas trick cars in the top four all four there this all going on further down the order as well one of those battles is uh, the battle for ninth and tenth we've got a shot of the car through the S's some lovely shots and these guys go to work there and well, it looks like the strategy game was paid off for Ross Rizzo because he's leading this race from Winkleman. Just a couple laps left to go. Five minutes left in this race. And uh, 
Trix Sim Sports themselves done a fantastic job to run on those top four spots now. There have been some big winners from the bold safety car strategy call. Ross Rizzo started this race in 15th, now leads. Soloski started 20th, now second. Anthony Winkleman has unfortunately gone back two positions, but it's much to the benefit of his teammates. And some of those drivers that just came out of the pit lane have filtered back in to some other cars that had pitted earlier. And that's giving us some great battles that we're going to see for the last five minutes. Huge underbrakes from the trick car to the inside of DPR and the Porsche has to check up there. Richard Hunter right in a gaggle of cars here and one of the other trick cars in there as well. Ryan Jerick is with a great view of this fantastic battle that has about uh, six or seven kilometers left before it sees the checkered flag. Make or break time. Yeah, it's gloves off racing now. Everyone has made their pit stop, I do believe, and they're all fighting hard for position now trying to get every last spot they can get every point matters someone that's not going to be happy with how this race has panned out there's Reese Gasul he's all the way back in 31st place he was looking almost on challenge running in third place so it ends up for Sam Sutton here's battle for ninth place Philip Woolley trying to defend Cody Bircher turns across his nose there trying to get an early apex to fend him off as Bircher as a spell of you there was Philip Woolley blinking in and out a couple times and Bircher will be a little bit unsettled with that showing to the nose of the yes is not the uh best overtaking spot in the world and thinks better of it. A bit of drama behind as well. Adam Briggs helps Bird and his Polo Gallon. Fantastic battle that is a much deeper down the field than they would have expected. Those kind of names. Adam Briggs, we saw it was third in the standings. Bird leading the standings and here they are battling over 15th place on uh, this is not the final lap of the race, there will be one more after it. We were right on the edge of how many laps we were going to go, but more drama. At Zachary Hanlon, making the move for fifth place there. Looks like he's got it done. Down into the corner, nice easy move on the brakes. And uh, on live pictures, Anthony Winkleman's actually gone by Scott Sosowski for second place as well. So Winkleman. I wonder if he's got the pace to get to Rizzo. He's about two seconds behind him. I don't quite think he's got that sort of pace, but a mistake from Rizzo, and Winkleman's going to be right there with him on the final lap. Yeah, indeed. So, uh, very interesting up the lead of the pack. Also, right here where Ethan Warren fighting for every spot he can get. He's just gone side by side with Philip Worley for a couple of corners. Eventually gets to the inside, gets the overlap. Can Worley try anything here? They're still dragging Cody Birch in that DPR BMW along as well. These guys are having an absolutely ripping battle. And you'd have a great view of it from atop that particular uh, tower there in the infield. Very famous viewing spot on this circuit. This is the final lap. Ross Rizzo's already started it. He's 1.7 seconds clear of his teammate in Anthony Winkleman, who is uh, only a couple of tenths ahead of Scott Soloski. So, let's see. Be very, very borderline exactly how many laps we get to go. We'll keep very, uh, our eyes very closely on it. Ross Rizzo right now, whether it's one lap to go, whether it's two laps to go, he's maintaining most of that gap that he has over his teammate. Uh, despite not having the pace in qualifying, it's been a fantastic race from him. And that's what we always expect out of him. Meanwhile, his teammate trying to keep it a trick one, two, three, four is under pressure from Zach Hamlin. He's going to have to go around the outside at the far end of the circuit. That's not going to work, so he crosses it back underneath. Did he get the throttle open early enough? The uh, trick car was almost parked on the apex, but now Hamlin, with a good run down the back straight, has his nose to the inside. He does, and he should be able to make this move stick as they make their way down uh, to the end of this back straightaway. He's on the inside, he's got the preferred line. He's deep on the brakes. He goes through, but look at the switchback from Trent Thomas. Gets back around and clears him into the next corner. Hamlin also has to dive out of the way to avoid going into his rear end. And great defensive driving, and great overtaking from Trent Thomas to get that spot back. And he'll hold him off for another couple of corners at least as he gets the power down very eagerly coming out of that corner, a bit of a slide and he will carry on in fourth place right in behind these guys is Jimmy Ball and John Peasnick as well battling for sixth and seventh. Fantastic defense from Trent Thomas exactly what we'd like to see there's as you can see 15 seconds on the board and here comes Ross Rizzo across the line that means we're going to get one more lap if he'd been just 
maybe half a second a lap slower on average. That would have been the checkered flag then, but it's the white flag now, and he's got one more lap to survive. Winkleman closed about six tenths on him on that lap. Dragon Scott Soloski along with him as well. Cody Bircher is in the pit lane for a second time. Is this problems for him, or did he not pack enough fuel thinking like we did earlier that the race was going to go one lap shorter than it inevitably has and does that mean there's some other cars risking it out there who we might see splutter and have to coast to the line we'll be very thankful that it's pretty flat in the final sector look how close Winkleman's got to Ross Rizzo he's going to be in the jars I think down this back shot is Rizzo a bit short on fuel is he just a bit short on pace compared to Winkleman and could we see a final lap pass for the lead? Look at how Winkerman closes up on the brakes. Down the back straight, he's firmly in that draft. How close can he get? He's led so much of this race. He didn't pit under the pit stops, but that might be his downfall. Rizzo made that master stroke by pitting under green, and Winkerman's right there with him on the final lap of the race. Yeah, indeed. Winkleman oh. being massively quick in qualifying. Does he go down the inside? He does. Is he going to make the corner? Surely not. Rizzo goes back. And Winkleman will say, it was the last lap, I had to give it a shot, but that is one of the most ambitious outbreaking maneuvers I've ever seen. And he was lucky there's not Armco out there, that there's a bit of a runoff, because otherwise that would have been catastrophe for Winkleman. I think that gives Rizzo the breathing room he needs. Plenty of battles behind, though, on the final lap, with just a couple of corners to go. One of them is Trent Thomas and Zach Hanlon. They're side by side, coming through the last couple of corners on this circle. I've got one eye on these guys, one eye on the leaders. Trent Thomas going to hold him off. There. He's got two more corners to defend him, though. He's going to go all the way to the inside. Hamlin's going to have to go the long way around the penultimate corner. Hamlin can't quite get it done. Thomas will defend the inside, but out front, Ross Rezzo's just about done enough. And Rezzo's going to win round four of the Sprint Series Australia, leading home a one, two, three, four for Trick Sim Sports. Fantastic for that team. Fantastic race we've just seen, but it's not over yet because there's battles all the way down the field, more than 40 starters. And one of the ones we're watching, Alex Bird, he is struggling. Is there any fuel left in that thing? Because he is being swallowed up. He was 20th last time we looked, now down into 25th. Definitely expect a couple cars to run out of fuel on the way to the line. This race has gone longer than many expected. One of them has got to be Cameron Dance. These guys go past him. That Porsche spluttering to get to the line. Bird, does he have enough in it? running out on his way to the line but he just gets across the timing line which is a bit further down towards the exit of the final corner what a fascinating race we've just seen strategy of all kinds that safety car coming out at a very very critical point for could the teams pit under there and make it to the end ross rizzo the highest running driver who took that gamble on pitting under the safety car early and boy did it pay dividends for him from 15th on the grid he becomes your winner here didn't have the pace in qualifying didn't have the pace in the first couple of laps but he went exactly how he should have done on strategy we're going to bring you the full results after this message I started working on Epiroc machines in 2009. I've been able to career progress through the company to become the product manager for Australia. This is what inspires me. Epiroc Australia is looking for passionate people to be part of our global team and to make a real difference for our customers. If you are ready to start a new journey, visit us at epiroc.com.au. Epiroc, our partners and sponsors here, SimSpeed TV and GT Leagues Australia for this season of Sprint Series Australia. And well, in round four, this is your finishing order of what was non-stop action start to finish. Ross Rizzo comes from deep on the grid with a strategy masterstroke to take the win. It's not the first time we've said that, and something tells me it won't be the last either. His Trick Sim Sport teammates also benefit in what was a little bit of an uncertain race on strategy. That's where they prevail. Winkleman grabs second, Scott Soloski in third, Trent Thomas held on in a fantastic fight for fourth against Zachary Hamlin, who gets fifth. Jimmy Ball sixth seventh goes to john pesnick and ethan warren finishes up in eighth philip waller we saw putting out his best defensive moves for the last half of that race finishes in ninth place out of east keen in 10th 
who finished 18 spots up on his starting slot. Good race for him. Bo Albert comes home in 11th for Alta C Sports. Ron Jarek from Eclipse, Richard Hunter, Michael Healy, Adam Briggs, Simon Mazoma there, coming home in 16th place. Yeah, indeed. And then 17th, Darren Lobb, Mia Ott in 18th, 19th, Justin Wallace, 20th, Neil Pearson, 21st, Joshua Burden, 22nd, Thomas Hins, 23rd, Alex Court. And here, probably our big story of the race, your points leader who'd won the first three races on the trot, only manages 24th in round four. That's going to shake up the point standings. Certainly, some big strides being made by number of and Anthony Winkman. On, sorry, Alexander Bird in that one. Uh, looking back through the rest of the results, Cody Bircher, Cameron Dance, Cameron Stubber, Reese Gasul had a bad one today after that contact with, I believe it was Sam Sutton earlier on at the end of the back straightaway. Sam Sutton himself finished right in behind him in 29th. And Luke Page runs out at the top 30 ahead of Warren Pickering and Darren Huxham. Big grid and the rest of them are going to be on your screen as we head towards some driver interviews. And our top three, all trick sim sports drivers, but your race winner, I'll say it again, from 15th on the grid, Ross Rizzo. Uh, Ross, race went one lap longer than I think a lot of people, including us, were expecting. Uh, did you have to save a little bit of fuel on your way to this win? Uh, not much at all, actually. I did a fair bit of, um, I was fairly conservative in the traffic, so I knew I should be sorted either way but i was a little bit shocked when you know cross the line there was only about 10 seconds left but um quick check of the fuel tank a couple of minutes ago uh, a couple of minutes before knew that um i was going to be able to make it i mean whenever there's a little bit of uncertainty around what's the correct strategy should you pit under the safety car shouldn't you that's when we always see you trick sim sports guys come to the front and from what was i think probably not the qualifying you were after you've I think you must have been pretty bold being the first of the drivers to come into the lane. A lot of cars behind followed you, but everyone in front stayed out and it paid off. Were you confident when you made that move or did you know where you were in the field? You just needed a gamble tonight. Yeah, I needed a gamble. I think qualifying actually went slightly better than I was um, expecting. Like the time was good, but the qualifying position, not great. But um, um, look, the um, I, I was always going to have a, have a gamble. I mean, I do need uh, a change in the strategy to to have a chance. I mean, ironically, I've been waiting. I've been waiting a full year or two two full seasons to do that strategy again, which is which is funnily enough the last time I won a race in this series. So, um, I, when I saw um, when I estimated when the green flag was going to drop and we um, uh, went uh, after the uh, caution, uh, I knew it was my chance to to emulate Spa from season two. So I had to ju had to jump at it. And, and speaking of that, I mean, we saw, I think, a pretty strong grid tonight, more than 40 cars and many, many very recognisable names for me and also regular SimSpeed TV and iRacing eSports watchers. This series, do you think that the, the quality of the competition has continued to rise? Because from where I'm sitting, it looks like it really has. Oh, for sure. I, I don't think I've been a genuine podium contender for uh, at all this season. Um, until tonight, unless, of course, the, the strategy changes. And we've had our, our guys, um, Alex um, and Anthony in particular, really stepping up uh, to take podiums. Of course, the, the guys at uh, JP Racing been very fast. Louise has been unbelievable in that Ford. We've seen some of the guys from DPR right up the, the pointy end. And, of course, the Altus guys who, you know, they're a, a world championship team. And that's kind of the caliber that you, you've got to be at. So we're putting in a, a ton of time to... Um, uh, to tune the car and make sure we're giving ourselves the best opportunity, especially for Alex and um, and Anthony. Well, congratulations to you, Ross. 400 points go against your name. Anyone you'd like to thank, any shout-outs to give? First and foremost, I have to give it to um, uh, Peter Jasinowitz, um, our, our recent um, signee who has done an amazing job in um, tuning our car and um, giving us some uh driving line tips using the using telemetry so thank you so much pete um it's been a huge help so uh also to the boys at trick sim sports um trick custom fabrications um night rider designs and gel real timing of course you guys at SimSpeed, the iRacing esports network and motum simulations and epiroc 
Well, there we go. Congratulations on that win, Ross. And I'll let Ryan speak with our second place man, Anthony Winkleman. I'll give him the best shot. And uh, Anthony Winkleman, it looked like early on you might have had this race almost won. He looked almost unchallenged and fantastic pace. But that safety car really uh, put a grinding halt to that one. And from your perspective, hindsight, would you have put it under the safety car? Or do you think you just made not enough pace? Oh, I probably couldn't have dragged any more pace out of the car, but um, the car was really good. But uh, I seemed to have a bad run with safety cars, get, just getting ruining my races. So I don't know. It, it was a it was a catch twenty two really. I had track position when the pit call was made in team chat. Um, so it was six of one half a dozen. I, at hindsight, I probably should have taken it, but to have track position here is is very good considering you know we did have quite a few stacks by the sound of it behind us so it was sort of a roll the dice if they were going to take the strategy but for me it was sort of a stay out front and and try and get the biggest lead i could yeah well, i suddenly mentioned in the booth that track position was going to be pivotal on a race there where overtaking was proving very tricky and we saw at the end you had a huge crack at ross rizzo coming out of the yeah. uh, back straight <laughs> I was on push to talk at that stage and I couldn't push that button fast enough to yell at him to get out of the way but it was actually not a send it was a, a complete balk to try and um, just to have a bit of a laugh but at the time I balked I didn't realise the braking marker was there so it was either get back online and take him out or just dive to the apex as soon as I could just to get out of his way which Thank God he saw me coming and he could just um, open the wheel up again. But, yeah, it was, it was not, a, not a fun time, that's for sure. Yeah, well, it was a good to see you guys managed to finish that race and didn't take yourselves out. Would have been disastrous and ruined that fantastic one, two, three, four for Trick. In terms of the championship, looking forward, and uh, our championship leader had a disastrous race by his standards. Uh, what hopes have you got there moving forward of getting up there in the championship? Yeah, I think Alex has still got... I think we still got some drop rounds to play with in regards to Alex. I don't. I've pretty much got to round up as many points as I can from because I have to, you had to use my... Um, I had to use my drop rounds already. But um, Alex should be still sitting pretty, considering he had, you know, he's won three in a row. So, I don't know. It's it's probably a bit too early to tell, but we're just going to keep, keep doing what we're doing. And to have a team result of one, two, three, four is just unbelievable. So... Real kudos to all the boys pulling together. It's it's a nemesis track for myself, and I don't think there was a smile all week in practice. So to have the result that we did today, considering you know our hatred for this track, is just it's unreal. Well, I think you're in the best team on the grid at the moment in terms of the this Sprint Series Australia for good results. Before we let you go, any shout outs you want to give? Uh, just to Trick Custom Fabrications, Night Rider Designs. And um, SimSpeed for the broadcast, eSports Net, iRacing eSports Network, and um, yeah, GLA for hosting the series, and also EpiRock for the sponsorship. Thank you very much. Anthony Winkleman, that was your second place getter from tonight. And uh, David, I believe you've got one more up here with us. Yeah, we've got Scott Soloski, also of Trick Sim Sports, and one of those other drivers who made the early pit call along with Ross Rizzo from 20th on the grid to stand on the podium. I mean, it, you've got to be somewhat delighted with that, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm stoked. Two weeks or two rounds in a row, I've ended up on the podium. And quite honestly, two times, two weeks in a row, I haven't had any right to be there. I've had some uh, real life commitments, which meant I haven't had to do, I haven't been able to do any practice whatsoever uh, for today. Literally got in the practice server uh, before qualifying, and that was all I had. So it was a real credit to to the boys who've been doing laps through the week to get the setup right, so I could just jump in and look like a hero, which you know is not really fair. And all the other guys who did hundreds of laps, to be honest, but um, I was forced to pit when I did. I actually picked up a, a meatball flag with some mid pack nonsense. Um, so I had no choice but to come in then and it just so happened that it, it was the, the key lap that meant um, that we could run to the end and um, pick up an unlikely podium. And obviously all the trick guys running in the BMW, for a, you know, it was on the pole, obviously it's a pretty quick car, but when it comes to the fuel consumption and, and trying to conserve a little bit if you have to, is it, uh, is it possible? Is there another car that's better for it or is it 
the BMW just all round uh, pretty strong. Oh, I've I've only ever had a lot more. Uh, most of my experience has been in the the 488, um, where I ran most of you know some endurance series and last season as well. Um, I think the the BMW at the moment in this build is a, a more rounded car. It's quite um you know it's it's um easy to learn, easy to pick up, easy to work on, um, which makes it easy to race obviously. So um you know we're all we're all in the same car this season, which is good. So we can bounce ideas off each other, setup wise, and um you know the results show today with one two three four. Well, congratulations on the podium. Good run from you. Great run for the team that you're a part of. And I'd, I'd ask you if you've got any shout outs, but I'm not sure we need to hear the, the trick sponsors three times. Uh, anyone, anyone else you'd like to give a shout out to anything fresh, anything funky? You yeah, know, the, uh, the boys have covered the sponsors nicely, but, um, just, just our guys in, in the team, you know, like I said, they've been putting in big numbers in terms of laps and, and, um, Ross, I know Ross mentioned, uh, Pete who's been working on our setups recently and, and the results are really showing that's where our team's come on leaps and bounds this last few, last few weeks and months. So, um, yeah, shout out to the boys and, um, hopefully we can, um, keep going into the series until the end and pick up a championship. Well, I wish you the best of luck, and I, I hope it's entertaining for us to watch here on SimSpeed TV, even half as much as this particular race was, because it was non-stop action. Thanks to the three of you guys coming in and having a word for us. And Ryan, I mean, <laughs> let's wrap it up, because wow, that was, uh, except for behind the safety car, 45 minutes of non-stop action all through the field, and a bit of strategy playing out too. <laughs> this series is amazing. I absolutely love it. And you've got guys like, you know, these Trick Sim Sports guys, and the quality of this field is just so high, and it's been absolutely amazing to watch. And this race, once again, has been an absolute cracker. We somehow managed to have a strategy race on a 45-minute one-stopper, and uh, once again, it hasn't failed to deliver. Well, thank you so much to everyone who's tuned in uh, on all the platforms that we broadcast here, SimSpeed TV, live on the iRacing Esports Network, also on the SimSpeed Twitch channel, also live on Facebook. So wherever you'd like to watch, you can catch plenty of sim racing action from us. And we hope we'll see you again soon. This was a fantastic round of the Epiroc Sprint Series Australia. Lots more action coming in the coming days on SimSpeed TV. We hope you'll join us for that. And, of course, you can see a lot of that on our Facebook page as well. Know when we're going live. And also subscribe to the iRacing Esports Network. I'm David Haynes. Alongside me was Ryan Jones, our producer, Jay Kennedy. From all of us, thank you so much for watching and good night. Fantastic. This is GT Racing right now. He's got traction. He's going with the outside. Oh, of both of them. Maloney. Oh, oh he's, he's taking Anderson. Anderson's up to him. Oh, my God. Oh, what a big crash. Oh, my goodness. Oh, the field's going to get rolled. Very close. These guys are going to want to make their way through the field very quickly. Oh, there we go. Oh, no. That's massive. This is it. This is over. I can't believe this. Oh, my God. God, what?